everybody welcome back thank you for joining me today now a lot of people have been asking me for a really really long time to do a video on how I package wrap up and get my pieces ready for shipping so I have managed to find some time um, to do a quick video for you guys and show you guys how I ship my paintings now there are hundreds and thousands of artists out there uh, in YouTube land, everywhere land, who have different methods of doing different things. Um, but this is the way I do it. Um, for me, I find it works well. Out of the hundreds and hundreds of paintings I have shipped worldwide, um, I've had maybe two get damaged. But of course, that was because the postal service decided to you know, use my uh, parcel as a soccer ball and kick it around and throw it around. You should see some of the pictures I get from my to my clients where I had an item damaged. It's like a rabid dog chewed the box open and destroyed it. Aside from one or two of those issues, I've never had an issue with a painting being uh, damaged. So what I'm doing seems to be working well for me. So. Um, today I have this 11 by 14 inch diptych. Uh, I need to wrap it up and send it to my client and my client, if you are watching, I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to do this. Um, but with the holidays and Christmas and the house renos, um, it's been pretty crazy, but I'm getting to it and uh, I will show you guys how I do this. So what I have here obviously is my clean table. I don't have any paint or anything on it. These are my lowly Vefi mats. Um, these are my silicone mats that I use. These ones on this side are super clean. The ones on the other side, a little bit dirty. But what you want to do now is I have these top coated with resin. So um, what you want to do, if you have your pieces top coated with resin, you don't want to touch them, okay? If you can, which I don't have, um, get cloth or cotton gloves um, that way it keeps your fingerprints and the oil off the residue off your fingers off the resin, okay? Um, I have yet to buy myself some gloves, which I keep saying I'm going to and I keep forgetting. But your regular gloves that you use for painting that I use for resining also work well. It keeps the fingerprints off, but cloth um, gloves are a better way to go. You don't want to touch the resin, especially on the top. All right, so I have this cloth here. It's a very, very soft, fuzzy cloth. It's like a fleece cloth. I got it from the dollar store actually, or, you know, and I use this to lightly, I don't scrub, just a light brushing on top to get any dust particles off or anything like that. If you use paper towel or anything else, um, it will scratch the resin, okay? So please keep that in mind. Um, so here, let me actually show you this piece. Um, it is done, has the crystal resin on it. Look at that shimmer and shine in there. All right, so the back needs to be stamped and dated. So what I do is I don't like to turn my piece upside down on anything unless I know 100% sure I have a clean surface. If I have a clean tablecloth, a plastic tablecloth, I'll do it on that, but I don't have one on here right now. So I put down a piece of tissue paper, just like so. I will put this down here like this. Now, this used to be my stamp. Um, it was just a rubber stamp with an ink pad. Um, that's what I used for a long, long time, a year or so more. Um, but then I had a wonderful friend um, make me a custom stamp. So now I have my actual logo with my custom stamp and it's a self inking stamp. So if you're looking for a stamp, check out, you know, places where you live, check out Etsy um, and see if you can find yourself a place that will do a custom stamp for you. So what I do is I stamp the back of my canvas, make sure it is centered perfectly. I will push down, make sure the ink, you know, kind of seeps into the back of the canvas here. Now, don't worry, the ink will not go through the layers of paint onto the other side. You don't have to worry about that. And then I take a Sharpie, 
a really nice new with a nice tip on the end. If you use a fat tip marker, it's going to be sloppy. So I use a little fine tip Sharpie and I sign my name and I put the year 2020, which soon will be 2021. And that is what the back of my canvases look like. Back is super clean because I tape my backs. Everything is clean, neat, and tidy. So there's that one. I will do this one super quick as well. All right. Sign it as well. Now, I've heard some people say, oh, the Sharpie will eventually fade and you won't see it anymore. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never had um, anyone complain to me about that. But if you feel that that might happen, you could always sign the back wooden part of the frame. Um, I, like I said, I've never had an issue. I've never heard anyone say anything about that. But who knows? I've only been doing this for two some years. Maybe in 10 years from now, it will disappear. I have no idea. I don't see why it would. It's a permanent Sharpie marker. So I'm not really sure why that would happen. Okay, so next, what you wanna do is get some bubble wrap. Um, I buy my bubble wrap off Amazon. Uh, let me see here. And um, I've tried all kinds of different bubble wraps, different name brands. I've, you know, I've bought the really cheap stuff because I figured, oh, this stuff on Amazon is so much cheaper. I'm going to buy this stuff. But you know what? Just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's better because um, the bubble wrap tends to be super, super thin. The bubbles aren't filled with air too much. So it's basically just plastic and there's no protection at all. So I've learned my lesson by buying cheap stuff um, on Amazon. But what I found works great for me is the Duck brand bubble wrap, okay? Um, I swear by this. Um, if you can find at a very decent price the bubble wrap that has the big fat bubbles um, at a decent price, go for that. Um, but here in Canada on Amazon, I find it's pretty expensive. Um, but like I said, for canvases, this bubble wrap is very um, effective for me. If I'm wrapping, uh, let's say, a wooden piece, like, you know, those wooden animal shapes I used to do, then I use fat bubble wrap. And then I also use, sorry, let me grab it for you, show you. Uh, I also use these. They're called, um, I can't remember what they're called. Um, envelope, no, bubble mailers. Um, pillow, pillow something. Air pillows, that's it. They're called air pillows. Um, I get these a lot in my Amazon packages, so I save them all, but you can also order them off Amazon. Um, Uline also sells them. I have a massive box that I ordered off Amazon. They're from Uline. But if you get these, save them. Don't get rid of them. These things, um, especially with my wooden pieces, work wonders. Okay, so you can get those as well. And you can use those with your canvases if you like in the corners to make sure the corners don't get hit. But like I said, I find that uh, this bubble wrap works well for me. So what you wanna do is you never ever want to use the bubble side. Use the flat side on the canvas, all right? So I have this 11 by 14 here. So what I wanna do is obviously it's not enough on one sheet. So I'm gonna have to double the sheet up. So what I do is I'll rip that like that. <clears throat> I'm not used to wearing gloves and I will make a second layer like so. So this video is probably going to take a while, but you guys all wanted to know how I do these things. So learning a full tutorial will take time. All right. So there I have it. I got to take these off because I simply cannot work with these on. That's just for handling the canvas. So now I will show you, I have two types of rolls of tape. They're both, again, from the dollar store. This is like a good tape for wrapping up the bubble wrap around the thing, around the thing, around the canvas. And then I use this one to actually um, tape up my boxes. So I'll put that aside for now. This one's closed. Let's get one that's already open, this one. So what I do is I will just tape 
the bubble wrap right there so that it sticks together. Then what you wanna do is get some tissue paper and put it on top of your bubble wrap. All right, there you go. Then you take your piece without touching the tops or the sides or anything like that and you put it upside down. Never, ever, ever, ever wrap bubble wrap directly onto your canvas. It will leave marks. It will leave the little bubble impressions on your resin and your piece will be ruined. Your client or whoever recipient gets it will open it up and find bubble impressions all over it. So never ever wrap bubble wrap directly onto your canvas. I use tissue paper, again, from the dollar store. I've heard people use parchment paper, wax paper. Um, I have this brown roll of craft paper, again, from Amazon. Um, you can use this if you want, but this is super expensive. If you have to wrap a bunch of paintings, it's gonna start costing you some money. So I simply just go to the dollar store and get tissue paper. All right, so then, I wrap her up. You can wrap up the tissue paper first or just do it all at once, which I tend to do it all at once. So I will do that. Just like so. Flip it up. I will take this corner, just like that. Then I will go here. Now making sure that when you're folding it down, the the tissue paper is wrapped along the side here, okay? You don't want the bubble wrap touching the side. Like so. Voila. And then. Oh, someone's trying to get a hold of me. Jeez Louise, who is it? Oh, it's Rinska. Ha, huh. Rinska saying hello. All right, so there, see, I want to make sure that the tissue paper is touching the side of the canvas and not the bubble wrap. All right, I will take this here. All right, and this one like so. So there you have it, perfectly wrapped. Okay, I don't worry about the back because it's gonna go in the box. So there is one. I'm gonna put you guys on pause. I'm going to wrap up the second one and uh, we'll get moving on to the next part, which is boxing. Be right back. All right, so I've got both pieces wrapped. Um, when I send out a painting, I have a thank you card that I just purchased a bunch of them from the dollar store. Um, thank you card. I write inside the card a little note saying thank you. And then I also um, put inside um, one of my business cards. So I just find that it's a nice personal touch to add a little thank you note and tell the buyer that you appreciate their support and um, thanking them for buying a piece of your art. So I tape it to the top and then I have these cute little stickers, uh, different kinds that say handmade with love and I just put it on top like so. So there you have it. Um, I don't spend too much crazy money on, you know, personalized stickers and, and that kind of stuff. I only spend that on business cards. Anything else after that, um, for me personally, I find it's kind of a bit of a waste of money. Um, I've received things from people where they have business cards and all kinds of fancy stuff inside. And I hate to say it, it's not something I keep. Um, I end up just tossing it. So um, I find, for, again, for myself, this is just my preference, I would rather spend my money on packing supplies, um, other supplies, instead of uh, a flyer or some big fancy sticker with my logo on it. Um, you know, for this kind of stuff, this I find is good enough and I like it and works for me. So I will put those aside. So next, um, also, you can also get these cardboard little triangle corners, corner protectors off Amazon. Um, I got these from a painting I got a while back. 
Um, I can't even remember what they're from, but you can get them off Amazon. And if you choose, you can put them on the corners of your pieces like this for protection. Again, um, I never do this, but if you want to, it's up to you. If you'd like to spend the money on that kind of thing, again, up to you. I don't. As I said, if you protect the canvas properly inside the package, you should have no reason to use stuff like that and spend extra money. All right, boxes. A lot of people ask me about my boxes. I have, move this over here, pizza boxes, okay? They are pizza boxes. Now, I don't know how it works around the world or where your post office and what the post office rules are for you, but here in Canada, the bigger the box, the deeper the box, the more expensive the shipping is gonna be, okay? So it's not based on weight entirely. They base it on depth. The deeper or tall the box, taller the box is, the more money you're gonna pay. So what I do is I get these pizza boxes. My mom gets them for me from business Costco. It's not the same as regular Costco. It is called a business Costco, okay? And I don't know if they have them in the US or wherever you live. Um, here in Canada, there's only a handful of them. And the only one I know of is down in Toronto, which is luckily five minutes from where my mom lives. And she heads out there and picks up boxes from me when I need them. They come in 10 inch, 12, 14, 16, and 18 inch. I wish they came in 20 inch because I have a lot of like 20 by 20 canvases and stuff like that, but they don't. So when you have a piece, an art piece that's bigger than what you have as a box, you need to play a little puzzle game and put boxes together in order to make the box big enough to fit your pieces. So here is going to be an example of that. So I have, as I mentioned, uh, 11 by, I was like, are these 12 by 16? No, these are 11 by 14 inch canvases and these are 16 inch boxes, okay? So what I do is I will start with the first box and just assemble the top half of it. I'm trying to do this so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Just like so. I'm not gonna close up the bottom. As you can see, I've left it open. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the other box. Do just the top half. And I'll show you why. Okay, so I have two boxes now with the bottoms still open. I haven't flipped the, that part in, okay? So what you wanna do when you have canvases that are bigger than your box. Now what I can do, what I could do is I could put an 11 by 14 in here, close it up, put 11 by 14 in here, close it up, put one box on top of the other and tape it together real tight and be done with it. You could do that, but so these boxes are six centimeters high, okay? Um, so if I do two boxes on top of each other, they now become 12 centimeters. So what happens with that is, it ends up being more expensive to ship because now the box is 12 centimeters high and not just six. So it's actually cost effective to keep your box as thin as possible, okay? So what I do is I will grab my one piece, I will put it here. Now when I put the other piece, you can see it comes out further than the box, which is why I now need a second box. Okay, now if you have empty Amazon boxes or you want to make a box, you can totally do that as well. Get a bunch of cardboard, sit there, cut it, bend it, shape it, do all that. I do not have patience for that. Um, I have so many paintings I need to ship out. If I had to sit and cut every single box to the perfect size of the canvas, I would be here forever. So I don't have that kind of patience. And these boxes, you get them in a pack of 50. 
And depending on the size, they range anywhere from like $15 for let's say the 10 and the 12 inch boxes. Um, and you get 50 in a pack. So they're about 15 to 16 bucks, something like that. And the 18 inch box, I think it's like 23 or 24 bucks for a pack of 50. So you know what, if you have to use two, maybe three boxes to pack something up, you know, I would rather do that than sit there and try and look through a bunch of boxes that I've saved from Amazon and this and that. And saving those kind of boxes piles up and takes up so much space. These things lay flat on my bottom shelves and they're out of the way. So this is why I like them. So what I did is I put the box underneath. I will slide it up right to where the box bends just like so okay so now i have the two boxes now what you want to do i'm going to slide it up just a bit because i slid it too much i have this brown craft paper from amazon i rip off a little piece now you can use newspaper i used to use newspaper i used to save my newspaper flyers and my newspapers um and i would use newspaper but I find this stuff is pretty inexpensive and it lasts a really long time because all I use it is for a filler. So what I do is I crumple it up like so and I put it here on the end. I just got tangled with my cord here. I will put it on the end. Now it gets tricky, you gotta, cause the box does open up on you, all right? Now the sides here, there's a gap on both sides. If you close your box up, tape it up and give it a shake and that canvas or that piece of art is moving in the box, no good. You want it to stay put. The more it moves, the more risk of it being damaged. So you want to make sure it stays put. Again, another piece of paper, I'm gonna crumple it up and I'm gonna put it along my side like so, and I'm gonna close this side. So this side's good to go. Crumple it up, put it on this side. Close that up. Make sure it's nice and tight. One more piece for this side. And then I'm going to close this up. like so okay so now i've closed them both up and what you want to do is just kind of squeeze it so that it goes end to end okay because again the longer the piece the more money you pay so you want to squeeze them together make sure the canvases is touching the paper inside it's end to end i'm going to i need to take this shut Okay, make sure all my corners are in good. Okay, and then just to hold the box closed so that it makes my life easier. Uh, there we go, where's my end? I will just tape the sides together. This one, like so. And this side. Ripped. That's hilarious. Let's try that. Again. Okay, take this side. Okay, so now my ends are taped. And then what I do is I pick it up. I don't hear anything. I feel like I'm doing a dance. Let's do the twist. Um, anyway, so it's not moving. So that's exactly what I want. Now these little tips here on the end, obviously they're pizza boxes, so for they're for venting for the hot steam to come out when you put a hot pizza box in. I just take them, fold them down, and then I tape over them. Because you want this to be as sealed as possible. You don't want, what if it's raining? What if it's snowing? I don't know. Who knows where these couriers and these postal service workers put these things, right? I'm moving the whole table. There we go. Okay, so now I've got it all in tabbed in my corners so usually I lift this up like this I don't know if you can see that though I'll put it on an angle 
I will, I get a heavy bottle of my resin or something heavy to help prop it up for me, like so. That way I can work up here. Then I get my big fat tape because this stuff covers more than this thin little tape. So if you can find this stuff at your dollar store, go with this stuff. All right. So then I go a span as far as that. I put tape along the top, tape along the side, and then I still have this up here. I fold in this way, I fold in this way, and then I pull the top down. I'm wondering if there's a better way I can show you how to do this. All right, let me see if there's a easier way. Let me see if I can do it this way, kind of. Let me see if I can prop this up like this. Oh, that might work. That might work for you guys to see better. It's not the way I do it, but just for you guys to see better. Okay, so roll your tape out. Yes, I use my teeth. Yes, I know it's probably super bad to do that, but okay, along the side, along the side. Make sure you push the top down, make sure it sticks. I fold in this, I fold in that, and then you want to make sure the box is as tight as possible. That's why you got to make sure you push this down really well before you start pulling or else it's just going to come off. And there you have your sides, okay? Now I still have obviously this flap here from when I closed the boxes. So you take that, put that there, put it up underneath. Okay, that flap is closed. You go to the back, there's also a flap on the back. You close this, like so. And then if you see any other flaps or any other parts that aren't taped that should be, um, I like to tape this little part here because this is where the pizza box has a flap and opens. So a little extra tape right there. Sorry if the camera's shaking around so much. I'm not used to doing this. Okay, another little piece on this side. And then those flaps, see those? You wanna close those up. Can't see what I'm doing at all. And there you go, one flap closed. Do it on all four sides. There we go. Let me just get these two on here. One. Okay, so my package is ready to go. Now what I do is I get a big, really fat, the biggest marker you can find. I get this from the dollar store. So I'm gonna put my shipping label here. So right here, I'm gonna write fragile, even though it's not, you know, glass or anything, but better safe than sorry. If there's something super fragile in it, you know, I might write um, please handle with care. Um, but it's just a canvas, so I write fragile on the front, fragile on the back, like so. And then I have, um, I ship everything um, with Canada Post. So uh, let me just get this over here. I ship everything with Canada Post and I have a business account with Canada Post which means I go online and I ship or create my own labels. So then with Canada Post, everything is done um, in centimeters. So what I do next is I have a little measuring tape 
right here. And then I get my pen, which is right here. I write, see, I do multiple packages at once. So I need to know and remember what on earth is inside the box. So I will write the client's name on the top here so that I know whose it is. Then I will measure it. So we have 60 centimeters by 42 centimeters, 60 by 42 by six, because I know this is always six. So that those are my dimensions. Then again, your trusty scale comes in handy. Now, if you don't have a business account or you just want to go to the post office, you go to the post office, they do all this work for you. I like to avoid the lineups. Um, I like to be able to tell my client in advance how much shipping is going to be. Um, if I don't know how much this is going to cost, I am basically making a trip to the post office, having the postal worker um, weigh it, measure it, tell me how much it's going to cost. Then I got to come home and email or text or message that client and say, hey, shipping is going to cost you 50 bucks. Then I wait for that client to send me the $50 for shipping. I never, ever, ever send anything out to anyone unless the painting is paid in full and the shipping is paid in full. Once you've paid all that in full, I will then ship your painting out to you. So for me to make a trip all the way to the post office just to find out how much this is going to cost, then I come back. It's like you're doing two trips. That's a waste of time, waste of your, you know, gas, this, that, and everything, right? Not to mention during these times, you want to stay home as much as possible. So I, I do this all from home. So I get a scale. This is the scale I use to do measure my paint. I turn it on. I put the piece on. Now it might not stay. So I'll try it this way. Oh, look, it stays this way. Perfect. It's telling me it's 2224. So 200, 2,200 and 24 grams, which then I must convert into kilos because on the Canada Post website, it is in kilos, which is easy. So that's not hard at all. You can also Google it, grams to kilos. Put in the grams, Google will spit out the kilos for you. All right, so there you go. My package is ready. I have these um, envelope stickies. Again, you order these from Canada Post. Um, if you have a business account, they ship them to you for free. I will go to my computer, go on the post on the website for Canada Post, punch in that information, all the buyer's um, address, all that stuff. I will print the label, charges it to my credit card. I print the label, slap it in here, slap it on top, and it's ready for the post office. I go to the post office. There's lineups at the post office, but I take my packages and I just scooch my way to the counter there on the side, they have a side counter, and I take them all and I go, boop, drop them off and walk out. And then I have all these people waiting in line thinking, what, what, she just dropped them off and walked away. Yes, because I've printed my own shipping label from home. So it's very easy to do. It avoids me waiting in line to get to the register with 20 parcels and then sit there for 40 minutes while she sits there and makes the labels for me and the people behind me are probably swearing at me thinking this girl's taking forever. So I print my labels at home. Um, I think I've covered it all. Um, if you have any questions in regards to something I may have missed, because I'm sure I have missed something um, that I'm not really thinking about right now. But uh, again, if you have a really, really long piece, like a 12 by 36 or a 15 by 30 or whatever, again, you just take boxes, you put them together like that. Um, when I do a 20 by 20 inch canvas, I only have 18 inch boxes. So I do one 18 inch this way, one 18 inch that way, one this way, one that way, sandwich them all together and I make myself a 20 by 20 box. Yes, I'm using a lot of boxes, but Again, they're not that expensive to begin with when I buy them from Costco. If you can't find pizza boxes uh, or you don't have a business Costco, um, see if a local pizza store will sell them to you. Um, or see if Amazon has pizza boxes, although I think they'll be a little bit more expensive. Uline sells pizza boxes, um, but they sell them in like 
more than 50 a pack from what I know. And if you don't need that many, mm, that's a lot of boxes to have in various sizes. Otherwise, save your Amazon boxes, save any boxes you receive in the mail from when you order stuff online, um, or just buy cardboard and like I said, cut it with a knife, you know, and make your own box. But this is so very effective for me. Um, it's very quick, it's not thick. It's like I said, the, th the less depth you have, the cheaper the package, okay? And there are different options with Canada Post. You have just regular mail um, with no tracking, no insurance. Then there's tracked packet where you can track the item, but again, no insurance. Then you have express post where you have tracking and insurance and a guaranteed delivery date. And there's insurance liability for like a hundred bucks. You can add more if you want. So let's say this painting was $600. I'm going to put insurance on it. Um, for every couple hundred bucks of insurance you add, it's only like two or three dollars on top, okay, of the cost. And these costs are paid by the client, not by me. So keep that in mind when you are giving a client a price for shipping. You need to factor in the cost of shipping, the cost of boxes, the cost of tape, bubble wrap, tissue paper, the brown paper. Like, I mean, I'm not telling you to, okay, five square feet of paper, that's 30 cents. Just mark up five bucks or something like that, um, or four bucks or whatever you feel comfortable, but you've got to factor in your materials and your time to drive to the post office, okay? That stuff's not free. Tape isn't free. Boxes aren't free. So if shipping at the post office, the lady tells you, okay, it's going to cost you 50 bucks to ship this. Um, I would turn around and be like, okay, it's 55 because you, you need to pay for all the shipping materials. So keep that in mind too. Okay. Um, this is how I conduct my business. This is how I ship my stuff out and this is how I charge. So keep that in mind. Cause then you're going to be losing money because bubble wrapping cheap. Okay. These boxes, when you go through them, the, the price adds up. They're cheap when you use one or two, but again, tape, bubble wrap, tissue paper, thank you cards, all that stuff. Couple of cents here, couple of 50 cents here, 75 cents there, it adds up, okay? Um, I think that is it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I hope this was really helpful for you guys. Um, I hope you guys learned something out of all of this. Um, again, if I missed something, I'm pretty sure I did, but um, leave it in the comments below and I will answer those questions 100%. For those of you who are watching and are not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit that red subscription button. Um, I would love more subscribers, obviously. Um, and I would love your support and hit that notification bell as well. So if there's anything else you want to know, let me know in the comments below. Um, you can check out all supplies. Like I said, I buy most of my stuff from the dollar store, but there are supplies like the bubble wrap, that the brown craft paper, that kind of stuff you can find in my Amazon links. The links are listed in the description below. Um, so check out my Amazon shops and shop on Amazon. Um, for those kind of things and I think that is it guys um, So thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was um, very informative and helpful for you guys And again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching Have a good day. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye